Hello everyone, welcome back to another contrast paint video with me Flick and today we're doing another couple of miniatures from the Batman miniature game, specifically Professor Pig, that is Pig P-Y-G. Definitely not anything to do with anything else. And one of his Dolotrons. Um, if you bring Professor Pig in a match of the Batman miniature game, you have to bring three Dolotrons. You see there's only one here, that's because ahead of time I've painted two of them. We'll take a look at them in a second before we get started. But this is going to be another opportunity for us to get some more time out of testing the Aethermatic Blue contrast paint, which we saw when we were painting Dove in a previous video. The list of contrast paints I'm not impressed by is very short compared to the list of contrast paints I'm very impressed by. Aethermatic Blue is on the, the list of not, not so great. I, I feel like I have to do additional work to make it look good, but we'll see, we'll examine it as we go. We'll be starting with that one today to do Professor Pig's apron, to do like the, the medical gown that the Dolotron is wearing as well. Then while that's drying we'll touch up any splotches and then move on to trying out probably some Gulliman flesh for the exposed flesh and also some Yandin yellow for their little boots and some white for his undershirt probably. Now it is also worth mentioning, all of Night Models mod uh, miniatures for the Batman game are resin. I would say they are better resin quality than the fine cast that Games Workshop did. However, they are prone to being very fragile and also inconsistent. So I am going to point out specifically that my Professor Pig only has one ear on his pig mask. And uh, part of his foot is just is missing. It's just been sawn off in the resin building process. Very unfortunate. It's just it's luck of the draw whether you get a good sculpt or a bad sculpt, but it's it's part and parcel of the experience I guess. So my Professor Pig is wounded, but we're still going to paint him. Let's have a quick look at the two Dolotrons I've done already. These are basically like innocent people he's turned into mindless drones. He wants to make them quote unquote perfect. So he's taken their organs, he's mutilated them, he makes them wear a mask that kind of just turns them into mindless zombies. So these are the two I prepared earlier while I was just testing things out. It's basically what the third one's going to look like. Professor Pig himself is a bit more detailed, so we'll have to do a bit more work on him. But that's how things are looking. Let's put these two to one side for now. And with that, get started with the Aethermatic Blue. Here we go. So after a little bit of drying time, here is the Aethermatic Blue so far. As I say, I don't think this is an effective contrast paint. It's too watery, the undercoating is too visible. I guess if you were doing an ethereal ghost type look, it would be good for that. But for purposes of medical apron and whatever, surgical apron, I guess, that Professor Pig is wearing, what we're going to do at the end, after the rest of the paints are done, is go over everything basically with a light coating of Agrax Earth Shade wash and that will get the the apron looking more like the finished two you saw where it's got a bit more definition, a bit more muckiness to it, a bit more obviously there's also blood for the blood god for the blood stains where they've had their organs cut out but just in general it makes it look a little bit better feel. I did the same thing to Dove to add more definition to her armour when we used the same colour but on its own not super effective it is the colour I'm after, just not the consistency. So anyway, next we'll probably tackle uh, probably the skin, I think. There isn't actually much skin on Professor Pig because he's wearing very long yellow like plastic gloves. He's just got a little bit of the back of his head showing and then his ankles. The Dolotron's got most of, well all of this arm, most of that arm but he's got a bandaged hand and then his legs. So we'll probably do that. In the same setting, I'm not sure if we'll handle the white yet because I think the skin tone will need to dry first. I'm trying to go darker colours to lighter. And we will be using Skeletal Horde for the bandages as well, but uh, white mask for the Dolotron, white shirt for Professor Pig. But we'll move on. Oh, he's also wearing black trousers as well, so we might quickly do those. Let's see as we move on to the next step.
So with the skin tone done, uh, oh, not in the time lapse, I just quickly added some brown for Professor Pig's hair. But we also did some of the white, which again you can't really tell because it's it's not a well defined contrast paint, the Apothecary White. But the air shade we'll be going over it with at the end will pick out the detail, make it look a little bit better. So the skin tone's got to dry, but after that we'll be using Skeletal Horde on the bandages surrounding the mask that the dollatron has been forced to wear as well as the bandaged hand. Then we'll be using a Yandin Yellow on the yellow surgical shoes and the surgical gloves, just because that's the colour in the official art for the model that Professor Pig is wearing. And then finally a little bit of Black Templar for Professor Pig's trousers that they're more visible at the the back. There's quite a bit of it visible here at the back here. Oh also I think during the time lapse forgot to do the little gap in the gown that had skin showing but that's been cleaned up as well. So we're going to do the rare triple time lapse as we do those steps. So after that time skip, we're about ready to move on from contrast paints and use standard paint for the rest of the model. We're going to use Storm Vermin Fur to line the bases and just uh, lead belcher for the knives probably. I don't have pink paint so I'll just be mixing red and white together for the pig mask on Professor Pig. He's also got a little bow tie that's very hard to point out but that'll just be red underneath his neck there. I went over that in white just to make it seem like proper surgical gloves. And then when all of that is dried, all of it we'll be coating everything basically in Agrax Earthshade I think. So we'll be back with a quick cut to the finished miniatures. So some drying time later with the Agrax Earthshade wash basically put over most of the model. Definitely the uh, Ethermatic Blue and the Apothecary White contrast to add a bit more definition, a bit more grimy because again everything in Gotham is just you just, you just feel like if you touched anything you'd just have dirt on your hands afterwards. So that is Professor Pig and the final Dollatron I needed to do finished. We can bring the other two over in a second here, but that's... I don't have a turntable, so this is as close to a 360 spin as you're going to get for anything I paint in these videos. But there's the other two Dollatrons. It's going to be hard to keep them all in focus, unfortunately, because you know how this camera is if you've watched these videos enough by now. Good luck, camera. I'm, I'm just letting it attempt. Okay, I mean, that's to be expected, honestly. What if I just zoom out a little bit? Closer, closer, but still not ideal. I think I'm pretty sure this one is a little bit blurry. It's hard to tell on the little screen I'm looking at, honestly. But that's them ready to go for the next Batman Minders Game Battle Report that I'll be recording real soon. Uh, the Ethermatic Blue is just... It goes in the shortlist, as I was saying at the top of... For the reasons I needed it not fit for purpose. If you're doing like ghostly looking things I think it would be perfect because it a lot of the white undercoat, well grey sear in this case but it's practically it's off-white, it keeps shining through so if you were doing kind of like a ghostly form perfect for that. For what I was wanting it to use like kind of like a, a see-through-y kind of gown or like I don't know like a rubber apron not as ideal but I, I still think it came out okay uh, so that is going to do it for this contrast video. I hope you enjoyed watching even though it's not a 40k miniature. I like uh, mixing it up a little bit. The Batman miniatures are so different compared to the 40k stuff out of paint. It's a good chance to try out combinations of colours that I wouldn't normally do. So I'm not going to commit to what I'm going to be painting next time for sure. You'll just have to wait and see but go check out the battle reports if you haven't if you're looking for more content or if you're interested in general gaming. I do have a general gaming channel on Twitch and YouTube as well. 
But thank you very much for watching this one. I sincerely hope you enjoyed, maybe inspired you to try out some contrast paints for yourself. Let me know how you find them, and I will see you for my next video. Until then, it's that for now.